almost 300 points gone on the Hong Kong index. 315 is non-farm payrolls. And if we look at private payrolls, they were 308,000. Why are these people short? And what if these shorts don't get followed through? Because shorts normally help markets if the market gets a trigger to move on, on the positive side. The Fed will, in fact, proceed with the 75 basis point hike uh, at the uh, in a few weeks at, at the next meeting in the FOMC. The Nifty is opening higher by just about 10 points. From a six-month, 12-month perspective, uh, I would still reiterate my uh, you know, cautious view here. With the defense of eight plus six to come, so 14 percent, the NGMBs are about roughly about a 10,000 floor project. To increase our portfolio, we are entering into this MOU with this mid detection. They have raised their target price on Reliance Industries to 3,085. We've actually moved up higher by close to about 100 points on the Nifty. What we see right now is that demand is going to be sustainable. Reliance Retail will build a brand portfolio through a combination of its own brands, joint ventures and acquisitions under the Reliance Retail Consumer Brands umbrella. Argument being made is that allocations to India should be unbundled from other emerging markets and hence FII allocation should indi to India should rise. The Nifty is up 110 points. Good afternoon and welcome to Closing Bell. I'm Anuj with me, Prashant and Sonia. It's been a very strong day for the bulls today. And given the fact that the market <laughs> actually opened flat, just about 10, 20 point higher, and then built onto those gains tells you the kind of market we are in. Uh, the, you know, dips getting bought, but even consolidations getting bought. And really the big theme has been the outperformance of the Indian market. I mean, if you look at the big markets, we are now the best performing global market uh, for, for this month uh, and by, by a mile. Uh, the Nifty Bank, in fact, that's trading at multi-month highs. I think it's already at uh, about a 9 or 10 month high uh, on, on the Bank Nifty, which tells you the strength of the domestic sectors here. Uh, the Nifty also consistently holding the 20-day exponential moving average uh, and the advanced decline has been very strong, all telling you that you may have positioning on the one side, but if the market moves on the other side, that's what it is. Uh, Laggard's also playing a bit of a catch-up. Let's see what the Lhasa brings for us. but. Uh, uh, Prashant Sonia, good afternoon. This is a market in which clearly, uh, you know, there's l large signs of big outperformance. I mean, we were talking about that unbundling, right, on that uh, big wall that has already happened. Yeah. <laughs> just <laughs> incredible, the uh, outperformance. Uh, and, you know, it just started from the word go. S6 was indicating a lower start. We did not get a lower start. We got a higher start. Market added on 100 points quickly. And, I mean, that's about it. Uh, no real looking back, no shakeout, nothing. Uh, and uh, just a clean kind of day once again. Global risk sentiment, mind you, uh, is negative, is on the back foot. So Asia, more, more than more markets were down than up. Uh, so that is one. Europe is, I mean, the last I checked, down, down meaningfully between, you know, some markets are down two and a half or percent. The euro dollar is suffering, of course. Uh, it's broken parity once again. The dollar index has been uh, sort of riding high across most Asian currencies. The DXY index itself is at about 110, 109.93 or so. Uh, so that strength is there. Uh, and of course, I mean, later today, we've got the OPEC plus meeting. By about 4.35, 5.30, we'll get the decision. I mean, markets are not expecting a change, but if there is an output cut, I mean, expect prices to react. Mark US market holiday today. On the Nifty, uh, what, you know, it's looking very strong, but just one level uh, is uh, 17,676. It's basically the 61.8% retracement of the recent fall. So the high was 17,992 and the low was 17,166. So if you take a retracement of this fall, the latest leg of the fall, that's about 17,676. Uh, and we are just about five or six points above it. Uh, will we get a definite close above it? Uh, I think, uh, you know, in any case, I don't think there's any reason just looking at the market to try and second guess it. The strength is clear. The direction is clear. Although the, there are enough and more doubters uh, in terms of how long this uh, rally will last. But that doesn't mean you should do anything about it or stand in the way of it. Sonia. Absolutely. And you know, what I really liked about today's market is that not once was there any profit taking. There was no real intraday volatility as well. It's a cool, you know, uptrending chart. And the bulls always like that, right, when you build on to the gains. And it's been very secular, the move on the upside. So it has ITC, Reliance, LNT, HCL Tech, Kotak Mahindra Bank. Across all sectors, there is contribution that has come through today. And that's definitely something that the street will like. Let's
let's see. For now, the market breadth is also well in favor of the advances. Uh, you know, over 1,900 stocks on the advancing side as we speak. We still have one hour to go, but it seems like it is advantage bulls, at least for today. Uh, let's tell you what's lined up on the show in the next one hour. The banking sector is in focus on the back of bullish calls coming in from brokerages. Why are brokerages so optimistic on the sector? A complete explainer coming up. A whole host of other stocks are buzzing on the back of brokerage notes. All those details lined up. And we'll discuss the way forward for the market with Vinay Jay Singh of GM Financial. Hmm. Okay, as always, uh, we start the show with last hour calls. Mitesh Thakkar joins us uh, on, the, on the show. Mitesh, good afternoon. Uh, what have you made of this uh, inherent strength? And it's just uh, not budging at all. Uh, and what would be your stock calls? That's right. I think a good start to the day. And I think then throughout the day, we have kind of, you know, while the who hasn't seen a very strong fall through, but it's been inching upwards, suggesting that there's no strong supply at the higher levels. I think that's that typically bodes well. We should at least see a test of 70, 750, maybe in good set. I think, you know, at least, you know, even attempt the recent highs of 70, 950, which is the closing high. I think that is all possible. So stay positive. I have two buy calls. In fact, MM Finance is a stock which is uh, broken into uh, fresh highs. That's a buy with a stop below 211, just below the day's low for a target of 226. And JSW Steel has also come on their done. I think that's giving a good price volume action. Uh, that's a buy with a stop at about 668 um, uh, and a target of around 710 is what I would look for. Okay, perhaps today's the return of the laggards, right? All the metal stocks are coming back, the battery stocks are coming back, the sugar stocks are coming back. Same guys who've been down about 15-20% this year. Uh, we have Deepak Shanoi, founder of Capital Mind, who joins us now. Deepak, it's a terrific day for the bulls. And uh, what we're noticing is that a lot of the laggard names are uh, back in focus. Metals are doing pretty well today. Do you like this space at all for the longer run? I mean, in steel, particularly steel, prices are under pressure. Demand is going through a bit of a rough patch. But would you buy in uh, amidst these issues? Hi, Sonia. I, I think, uh, you know, metals have been, um, uh, you know, they've been under pressure from the beginning of this year, I think, uh, steel specifically. And I don't think that cycle, down cycle is complete yet. We're not seeing a resurgence in demand. In fact, uh, uh, come uh, later this month, we are going to see uh, the U.S. talk about curtailing demand even more. And their real estate su sector is suffering. The Chinese real estate sector is suffering. India's is doing okay, but I think uh, uh, worldwide prices also dictate a lot of how profitability works here. So I would say um, not very interested. I think uh, the rebound in prices is largely uh, very India specific. Strangely, I think a lot of uh, uh, you know a lot of the other markets are not as buoyant as ours. So maybe they're just getting some of the love that the other stocks got last week. Uh, but but I, I'm not very positive on this sector for at least for 2022. Okay. Deepak, hi, good afternoon. The space which all of a sudden has uh, uh, come into its own is uh, all these battery manufacturers. The top two gainers are Exide and Amara Raja. Uh, any views here? No, we, I mean, I used to own them at, in the past, but then, uh, you know, the the scale of them moving into some of the electric uh, vehicle space and in uh, order to get some of the technology for some of the electric uh, from the lithium ion uh, and other batteries, I don't think they're, they were, I didn't think they were shaping up uh, fast enough. Uh, but the organ, they're one of the largest organized plays. So anybody else trying to do distribution in the space uh, will probably end up competing with them. And I think they have a good, uh, uh, they're in a good position to perhaps acquire some brands over here. However, having said that, I haven't seen any action from it fundamentally on that space yet. Uh, they, they've done some CapEx and, and some small uh, uh, entry points. But I think I'll wait for some of the fundamental news to wait in. I, I haven't seen the price action here uh, to for it to be interesting for us. We're looking at the fundamental story evolving, and I don't think that's evolved yet. Uh, Deepak, hi, afternoon. Uh, generally, broader markets, are you surprised by the strength, given that uh, globally things are on a, continue to be on the back foot? Uh, so, you know, you can look at any time period, and markets here have done very well. Uh, compared to the U.S. or other parts of the world? Yes, in fact, it's very strange because in the U.S., they're actually cribbing that their markets are not falling fast enough. You know, the 
Fed commentary, there was more like, listen, why aren't our markets falling? We are telling you we're going to increase rates, we're going to curtail liquidity and so on. Because a large part of their stock markets, uh, if, the, if, the, if the stock markets go up, people feel richer demand increases. And then they feel the need that if they want to bring demand down, then stock market should also be coming down correspondingly so that people feel less rich. India doesn't have the same kind of a problem. A very small percentage of India invests in our equity market. So it's not like if the markets went up, everybody would start feeling richer. Uh, so given that, I think it's just the factors that uh, make the stock market attractive are simply that there are very few uh, reasonable uh, alternatives uh, even in the debt side, we're talking seven and a half, eight percent at the max. St uh, bank fixed deposits are still six percent or below, in fact. Uh, so I think stock markets continue to be buoyant because of domestic participation, not so much because of international. Having said that, fifty thousand crores last month was was huge. So I think uh, you know part of it is probably explained by uh, renewed interest from FIs that came in last month, along with domestic interest. Uh, and uh, but I still can't believe that India will uh, be decoupled if there is a deep recession in the West. So I think we should, you know, plan carefully on that note as well. Okay, by the way, a lot of the banks are in focus this afternoon. Uh, banks hitting fresh 52 week highs. So whether it's Federal Bank, you have Karur Vaisya Bank, you have Bank of Baroda, all these stocks. In fact, Bank of Baroda is now up 65% for the year. So it's been a pretty smooth run there. Let's uh, get focus on, get the focus back on the banking sector. Brokerages are very bullish. Abhishek is here with the details. Abhishek. Well, Sonia, uh, we have CLSA and Nomura who have written on banking sector. To begin with CLSA, they, that, uh, they say that, you know, the credit growth has surprised positively over the last 12 months. So retail credit growth continued to pick up 18% YOI and 40 to 45% of the incremental growth that is coming in the sector is due to retail sector. So the big uptick has also been seen in the NBFC space wherein the loan growth is about 27% uh, YOI. Trade and other services have also seen loan growth. So they expect bond substitution by NBFCs to lead to demand in loans from these NBFCs. So they expect credit growth of about 12% in FI23 and about 11% in FI24. Top pick remains ICICI Bank and SBI. We also have Nomura's uh, who has written on the banking sector wherein they say that you know the loan growth is holding up strong. Payment trend is also strong. Bank stocks are cheap when compared to the broader market in terms of valuations. So well capitalized banking system along with the loan growth improvement and falling credit cost will lead to higher profitability for the banking sector going ahead. So they say that the net interest margin could find uh, some uh, support in the near term uh, from higher benchmark rates that the banks are giving. So they continue to have a favorable uh, disposition for the sector and their topic is also ICICI Bank and SBI. Back to you. Okay. Uh, and uh, there's uh, some interesting sort of note on federal as well, uh, right Abhishek? Well, uh, yes, I spoke to various analysts. They say that, you know, uh, why federal bank acquisition by Kotak Mahindra Bank is unlikely given the fact that, you know, uh, first one is that for any potential acquirer, there needs to be a promoter with more than 20% stake uh, who is willing to sell his stake. So looking at federal bank shareholding, there are no promoters over there and no one holds more than 10%. So a consortium of two to three funds have to come in together uh, in order to sell or uh, you know, make the acquirer have 20% stake in the bank. Second point that analysts do mention is that for an existing banking players, acquisition of branches are no more, uh, you know, a large value add in their uh, acquisition. So as RBI has already made branch opening much simpler and easier. So Kotak has always been on the prowl uh, for an acquisition, but at its own price. So they say that nothing has changed in Federal Bank over the last uh, six months, which can catalyze to an acquisition of the bank by Kotak Mahindra Bank. Back to you. Okay, Abhishek, thanks a lot for that. Uh, now, uh, Deepak, uh, this uh, federal bank, uh, for the last two or three years, I've been hearing that, you know, there's uh, perhaps some kind of m and uh, you know, if involving uh, federal and Kotak's name invariably comes up. But, you know, stocks done well, federal, over the last uh, three months or so after last quarter's numbers. Your thoughts? So uh, we haven't analyzed Federal's numbers uh, per se. I think uh, we own Kotak, so kind of bias there. Uh, uh, the 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 problem with I think um, you know the the at some time rumors there were there was a rumor every week that uh, Kotak would be acquiring X and Y and Z at the time. So it's just perhaps uh, uh, 
uh, a re revision or back to that kind of age where Kotaku was acquiring something or the other. But uh, in this case, there's a lot of synergy. I don't know if it's going to happen. I think uh, the only way Kota could do it would be to launch an open offer straight away at a price uh, that uh, they would like to buy this company at. I think, uh, uh, I mean, I don't see Kotak doing that just yet because uh, so many things can happen. Price can go above. It can become too expensive. We've seen this in the past. Shareholding is very fragmented. Uh, but uh, Federal Bank on its own uh, uh, might continue to succeed. They have been partnering with a lot of startups. The new digital lending guidelines will hurt Federal because they partnered with the guideline with the uh, with a lot of startups that were doing a bulk of the work and perhaps even doing some of the loss guarantees on some of the uh, 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 you know new lending that was happening. So we'll have to wait and see after the digital lending circular how much Federal Bank's uh, books change. Uh, and how they plan to shape their own internal tech in order to uh, take over some of the activities that now RBI has said they need to do rather than having their digital lending partners to do. Uh, this is a key watch. If we if this changes the equation, then federal is not as attractive as uh, it would have been in the last quarter results. All right. Uh... Uh, Deepak, uh, you know, just one point uh, before we take a break. The dollar index uh, is at 110, uh, Deepak. You know, the RBI has defended the 80 uh, level quite well so far. Do you think, uh, uh, you know, they, they, they perhaps, I mean, if the dollar rally continues like this, right, uh, the quantum of hikes that maybe the RBI will have to do uh, to kind of uh, uh, take care of the currency maybe a little more than what... Uh, you know, markets are anticipating from, you know, in, inflation-wise. Uh, they may be forced to do more because of the currency. Any thoughts at all? Yes, of course. I think uh, two things over here, the rupee may, be, may go into these global bond indexes. If that happens this month, then there will be some kind of inflow that will offset uh, uh, the outflows that have otherwise been happening. And secondly, the dollar index doesn't seem to affect us quite as much because our debt markets are not open or as easily open plus we're not in the bond indexes and so on so people don't invest in india to arbitrage out short-term debt uh, which is why um, you know interest rate increases does not necessarily equate to more money coming into india into the debt markets uh, having said that of course if the ru rupee goes to 80 82 83 there will be more inflation uh, uh, i believe however that the base effect because of last year's increase in inflation uh, will start kicking in by November uh, this year. So maybe the uh, impact of inflation may not be quite as high if we were to look at the base effect come November, December, and January this year. And because of that, I don't think the uh, uh, the damage will be as deep. However, having said that, I think there may still be another rate increase on the cards, uh, especially if inflation that comes in on the 15th of September uh, shows... Uh, uh, a higher uptick in August compared to what it was. So, uh, and of course, whatever happens in the next uh, uh, Fed meet, I do think they may have to increase rates anyhow, regardless of the rupee depreciation. But right now, it seems to be contained because of both RBI actions and because of uh, inflows from abroad right now into equity markets. I expect that to happen to debt markets also later this year. Okay, all right. Uh, let's do one thing. The market is still in fine fettle, 126 points higher the Sensex is inching towards a 500-point gain, so we'll take a quick break. We'll come back with lots more, discuss the way forward for the market with uh, Vinay Jaising of JM Financial. Do stay tuned in. Welcome back. Uh, well, uh, a lot of stocks are in focus on back of brokerage notes. Uh, first up, let's focus on the diagnostic space. Uh, Antique has initiated uh, with sell on Dr. Lal and Metropolis. Both these stocks under pressure. Nimesh is going to revisit both of them. Nimesh. Hi, Rich. So, as you rightly pointed out, uh, both the stocks are under pressure on the back of the antique note. On Dr. Lal, uh, they have initiated with a sell rating and a target price of uh, 1643, a potential 30% discount even after today's fall of 300%. On Metropolis, they have a target price of 12, uh, 1232, which also uh, indicates uh, a downfall of between 10 to 12%, even from current levels. Now, the key reason why they have, why they have a negative rating on both these stocks, one, of course, is increased competition, and two, uh, the, you know, the COVID-led tailwinds are now behind. So the entire sector now is, is looking for a scenario of a lower CAGR. In fact, Antic uh, you know, says that uh, the margins which, uh, which all these companies reported in FY21 uh, is, uh, is, is unlikely to be repeated anytime soon. 
and uh, you know they will revert back to the uh, to the uh, uh, you know uh, uh, to the uh, average of around 10-12% growth versus the 15% plus CAGR which which this company has reported in the last few years. Even in terms of uh, you know return on capital employed, uh, it will go back to close to 25-26% versus the uh, versus the pre-pandemic levels of around 33 odd percent. So uh, the entire sector is likely to be derated uh, purely on valuations, and hence on back of that uh, they have a sell rating on both uh, Dr. Lal as well as in Metropolises. Okay, and what about uh, a downgrade that's coming from Credit Suisse on ABB, Nimesh, considering that the stock has rallied so much? Is it purely because of that or any other reason cited? So it's a combination of both the stock rallying pretty hard and, and a large outperformer in the uh, in the capital goods space as well as elevated valuation. So on back of this, Credit Suisse has today downgraded ABB to underperform from neutral and they've written the target price of 2600 Again, a meaningful downside from current levels. Now, as I said, you know, ABB has, uh, has been a rank outperformer. It's, the stock has rallied over 70% in the last one year. Even in the last six odd months, uh, you know, the stock has rallied between 30 to 50%. So it's been a big, big move in this, that particular stock. Uh, while Credit Suisse is, uh, is uh, quite, uh, you know, bullish and, and they see evidence of investment cycle picking up. But AB, as far as ABB is concerned, after the big move, the stock is now trading at over 70 times FY24 price to earnings. And, and uh, you know, much of the expectations are in the price. So, uh, that's that's the key reason. Even on uh, DCF, uh, you know, it seems at current valuations it implies a 20% CAGR growth for the next 20 years, uh, with the highest ever uh, you know record margins of 12.5%. So, on elevated valuations and the fact that stock has run up so hard, uh, they have underperformed now ABB to underperform. Uh, while they are bullish on uh, the capital goods space, the top pick remains uh, LNT, where they are overweight on, and uh, they they still prefer Simmons over ABB purely from a valuation point of view. So. Uh, the key reason for the downgrade is largely a big rally and the fact that valuations are very expensive now on ABB. Okay, thanks a lot, Nimesh, for that. So that's on ABB, but Reliance Industries is also in focus. Morgan Stanley has Reliance as the top pick in the sector. They have, in fact, upgraded the stock or raised the target price, rather, uh, to 3085 which is a big upside to the current market price. They say that the fourth investment cycle that Reliance has announced to the tune of $50 billion over the next three years, it's progressing firmly well. And they also talk about how the investment cycle this time around is supported with one and a half to two times the operating cash flow and the EBITDA than the last cycle. So the investment cycle this time um, is quite convincing to them. They also speak about how the investments are happening across all verticals, whether it's chemicals, 5G, retail and even the new energy vertical and all of this put together will make sure that Reliance doubles in its earnings uh, by 2027. The stock actually is up one and a half percent. Deepak, uh, comment on this one. Of course, the the future is bright and we all know that but do you think, uh, do you concur with Morgan Stanley that you know this stock could even get to 3085 anytime soon? Well, I hope so because we own it and it's one of our largest holdings. But uh, uh, and I'm very biased here. But the main thing about Reliance, I think, is the fact that it's three large, very separate businesses. There's retail, there is geo, and the telecom business in, uh, uh, together. And there is the energy space. Uh, they're making investments. They've made investments in all of these three spaces. They continue to be making investments. They own Hamleys in the retail space. They own a bunch of other uh, uh, things, including now recently, I think they acquired some uh, old name brands like Ampacola as well. So they're kind of pushing up on all of these cylinders. But I think the value of this company is greater than what Reliance trades at right now. If they were all individually listed, the valuations would be... Uh, um, higher than the equivalent of 3085, if I, if I just may put it. But I think uh, uh, it's a bet on the future. There are a lot of uh, 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 old economy pieces in there. The, the petrochem piece continues to be a cash flow generator, and so does oil and gas, the refining pieces. But there's a lot of significant new hydrogen uh, 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 investments in the power electronic space and so on. I think I would bet on that as the future driver of growth. The number of 3,000 doesn't look very exciting. It's just 20% away from here. Uh, you know, it should get there with just GDP growth in two years. Just saying. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, I think the bigger thing will be if you can get a get a significantly higher multiple than that uh, when all of these de businesses demerge. Um, as I said, I'm biased. So, you know, take my words with a pinch of salt here. Okay, let's, uh, before we thank you, let's pull out a chart of Indian hotels once again. Uh, Deepak, it's been phenomenal, right? The run in uh, all the hotel stocks. 
बट इंडियन होटल्स व्हाट्स योर व्यू है सो आई एम पॉजिटिव अगेन वी ओन दिस इन द पीएम एस द द idea here was that there would be an unlock and there would be a lot of uh, uh, activity driving people to uh, in domestic hotels because international tourism is still a little you know a uh, little more uh, complicated to do and it's actually turned out that it's the case your uh, bookings and hotels in pretty much any holiday destination uh, anuj i don't know if you i mean if you look at the numbers it's like your holiday budget just has to double if you want to go to a taj hotel in uh, any of these large uh, well known destinations even in the rainy season it's it's kind of strange that it's happening like that but there uh, but the problem has been their debt overload they've kind of uh, added on quite a bit in the last uh, uh, because of the pandemic and that has to unwind slowly they did a rights issue the share has doubled from the point at which it first hit its all time high after covid which was at 150 160 levels it's a 300 plus uh, i think it's very re- it's like reasonably valued um, and i'd expect that there would be some volatility in the stock price once the post covid you know frenzy and uh, uh, ends and international tourism starts to take off again but uh, i think long term it's still a very good story and indian tourism is um, you know terribly under penetrated if you ask me so i think long term i'd still like to own this stock hey deepak thanks a lot for that i can tell you that i had to cancel my holiday because uh, i couldn't get uh, you know a room for decent rate so the cancellation of flights was cheaper than you know <laughs> buying the <laughs> than booking the hotel so uh, thanks a lot for 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 joining us uh, have a have a good evening uh, phenomenal move in some of these hotel stocks uh, vinay jay singh is managing director portfolio management services at jm financial he is now joining us vinay hi good afternoon thanks for joining us uh, uh, yeah we've uh, you know we've seen a massive outperformance of indian market uh, compared to global market and within within that the broader market is uh, almost running on steroids now of late uh, are you a bit nervous about the market or do you think that's par for the course uh, uh, are you staying fully invested your view so uh, very clearly we believe that the market has certainly run up uh, if you see the last month itself the market is flat to if i had today's performance up by 1% and the global markets are down 5 if i look at it over the last year the absolute market is still the same which is up 1% but you know you have nasdaq which is down 25% uh, the overall global msci market down uh, the world index down by about 15 to 18% so the relative outperformance has certainly been a lot uh, having said that in the medium term we remain constructive the indian market because we think the earnings growth trajectory is very positive but in the short term uh, due to a couple of reasons which include valuation and liquidity uh, we stay a little cautious uh, we have between 8 and 10% of cash on hand as we talk okay 8 to 10% of cash on hand uh, vinay good afternoon so as and when you decide to deploy that cash where do you see the pockets of growth or value now what are the areas of outperformance that you're looking at so we believe in a lot in two two big themes you know the first theme is the india resurgence theme as we can see in the credit data of the country which has gone from 5% two years ago to almost 15% uh, currently so we are very constructive the private banks so that's one space the second theme we believe in is the make in india or the manufacturing story uh, in the manufacturing space uh, you know when we talk about it don't think conventional start thinking about contract manufacturing companies start thinking about those pharmaceuticals or specialty company uh, chemical companies which are already outsourcing a lot from the country and selling it to the rest of the world so these are the two big themes uh, we are looking at invested and we are already invested in them as well so when you talk about uh, uh, constructive on private banks is it only restricted to banks because some of these nbfcs especially the consumer facing ones have done exceptionally well right bajaj twins have come back in a big way although still not at their all time highs uh, what do you do here so between banks and nbfcs we are clearly more constructive the banks uh, for a couple of reasons you're getting to play the entire uh, banking cycle be it retail or consumer uh, in the nbfc space uh, you know if you look at 2023 over 2022 one thing which will probably miss the mark would be the ipo financing which they won't have the second thing that will probably miss them would be the amount of ipos coming into the market as compared to the previous year so net of that you know as far as the entire banking sector is concerned you don't have those concerns uh, having said that even the nbfcs are currently taking loan from the banks 
So you've got another engine which is, you know, singing as far as credit growth for the private banks are concerned. So we would lay eggs on that part of the basket. Okay, fair point. Now, <clears throat> what about the auto sector? We've seen a huge run. Uh, I think six months back when it was in a multi-year bear market, uh, maybe the trigger was the decline in commodity prices, but uh, the last six months we've been seen we've seen a phenomenal run in auto names. Uh, your views? So absolutely, I would go back to the previous comment you made about uh, you know you cancelling your uh, hotel stay. Just think about uh, you know how many people have been waiting to get vehicles uh, coming in, and uh, you know the wait list is still at least a quarter plus. So I think the auto sector has gained on two counts. The first count is the demand has been fantastic based on the capacity available. Uh, uh, depending on the company we are talking about, you've got an average one quarter of inventory lie, of demand lying with them and virtually no inventory. And the second is the raw material because of commodities have come down. So there's no need of having discounts being given to the system. So you add the two and you see a medium term outperformance uh, on earnings trajectory as compared to the rest of the space. I think banks and the auto sector, you'll see some earnings uptick, but the rest of the sector with inflation numbers coming down, you may just see uh, the earnings coming down as well. So we would remain constructive about uh, the auto space as well. Uh, we are overweight out there. Having said that, uh, valuations are starting getting uh, a little unattractive in the auto space as well. Okay, valuations are getting unattractive in the auto space. Um, any other sectors where you feel that the valuations are still good to go and growth is coming back in a big way? So, you know, for example, some of these smaller themes, right? There's consumer durables that are coming back. Uh, there's defense that's picking up in a big way as well. Anything that you like there? So, well, you know, we, on the consumer theme, again, you know, we were a lot more overweight. Uh, we currently are a lot more overweight courtesy not just that, but, you know, absolute consumption, be it food, uh, be it, you know, drinks, uh, be it the party mode or the wedding mode, which is coming up. So the consumption space is the third space we are overweight on. Uh, you know, all this comes at a price. So where we are underweight, actually, are places like the IT sector uh, and a little bit in the energy space. Uh, we are, you know, I'm going back to our first theme I mentioned, you know, the India resilient story. Uh, the resurgence is very, very strong. Uh, you're seeing growth come in the banks and retail. It's coming from either direct consumption, so I would agree with that comment of yours, or in terms of, you know, if you look at the way the credit card uh, growth is happening by 15 to 20 percent on annual basis, it's just fantastic. So the demand from the Indian consumer is certainly up, and uh, we are constructive out here. Okay. We uh, have uh, one space which has not done well is uh, healthcare. Uh, I mean, it didn't do well when the market was down, and now it's not doing well when the market's doing well. Uh, what do your mind is sort of uh, hurting the sector and what's your view? So, you know, when we say healthcare, I'll add agro to healthcare as well. And you've got to look at them as individual companies on their own right. Some stocks have done fantastically, but because the large caps are largely domained about US sales uh, and a little bit uh, lesser about Indian domestic sales, you've seen uh, the pain in the healthcare sector. Having said that, uh, we are overweight uh, the healthcare and agro space. But here, you know, as I said, you know, we would not be looking at uh, purely the big ones, uh, we, the mid cap and the small cap space in this sector, especially the contract manufacturing space or the specialty chemical space. I'm just adding all three of them together, is where we think, uh, you know, there's a lot of goodness happening because people are looking globally at a Make in India story and a lot of, uh, uh, you know, products are being sourced out of India. So we would be, uh, uh, you know, uh, overweight in this space. Okay. Um, I know you spoke about how autos are looking a bit expensive to you, especially the OEMs, but we're having a big move in the auto ancillary names. You know, some of these uh, non-index large caps, so to speak, Tube Investments, for example, is sitting at a fresh high. There's a big comeback in some of these battery makers as well, like Saira, Maharaja. And then, you know, a lot of these companies say something like a Jamna Auto, which have been good wealth creators in the past. Anything that you like from this space, the auto ancillaries? So, can't comment on stocks, but, you know, if the auto sector as a whole has demand, which is going up, if you look at the amount of petrol and diesel consumption going up, the ancillary space in terms of volume demand has to be relatively good. So uh, that's where I would, you know, like to comment on. Uh, as a sector, auto and auto ancillary is seeing the best ever demand in a couple of years. And that probably telling in the valuations and the demand of the stocks as well. What about IT? Because uh, that is where the, the big debate is on right now. 
Sure. So you, if I look at global macro situation, the two-year, 10-year chart globally or in US is virtually at a 20-year low. You know, it was negative 40 bips a couple of days ago. It's negative 20 bips now. So what that is telling you is that the US economy, as you've seen in the last two quarters, has declined. Uh, in such kind of an environment, stocks which are directly linked uh, to the US uh, uh, order book or the US GDP, you know, IIT comes a lot into that way. Uh, again, I mentioned the pharmaceutical part, uh, telling you to break it up into two. So one part of the large caps there are also linked to US. So, you know, here uh, we would be non-constructive uh, as far as IT is concerned, and we are underweight out here. Uh, that doesn't mean, you know, we are zero weightage. Uh, you know, we are underweight by three to 400 basis points. Uh, we like the big names, however. All right. Uh, we'll leave it there today, Vinay. Thanks a lot for joining us. It was good talking to you and hope to talk to you again uh, soon. Uh, uh, we need to take a break, uh, but the market, by the way, is uh, still doing quite well. Just look at how things are moving. I uh, just want to point out, though, and it can happen in any market, of course, uh, just the profile of stocks in the broader market, which is now on circuit, perhaps should worry you. You know, you have uh, Suzlon, for example, which is now on 20% upper circuit. I know there was a bit of a news flow around that, uh, but, uh, you know, that's, that's on 20% circuit. The other name which stands out is Dish TV. Out of nowhere, that stock is uh, up 20%. So, uh, you know, just uh, the quality of the rally is perhaps Reliance Power is up 10%. Uh, so maybe the, the quality of the broader market rally is deteriorating a bit, but then, you know, uh, every market, uh, you, you see this. Uh, uh, it could also mean uh, some some amount of euphoria, you think? Yeah, obviously there is euphoria. There is yeah. absolute euphoria at the retail That's why all side. the laggards are coming back. Uh, you know, uh, Sonia, uh, I met uh, 20 people recently in a sort of uh, investor meet, uh, mm. and 21 were bullish. So <laughs> <laughs> that tells you the kind of euphoria that's... that we have. Okay, well, let, that's not a good thing <laughs> for the long term, right? Uh, let's see. For now, at least we are holding. I mean, whatever it is, the tape is moving up and that's all that matters. Let's slip into a quick break. When we come back, we'll get you a check on what dealing rooms are saying in our segment D Street Chatter. We'll get you some buy today, sell tomorrow calls from our technical expert. Welcome back. Uh, the market is doing fine. Let's go close to Nimesh for D Street Chatter. Uh, Nimesh, uh, tell us what have you picked up today? Hi, Rajan. It looks like the bulls have a big control now. And this is despite the fact that the feedback is that overall the FIs are, are better sellers in the market today. So, you know, that shows the kind of momentum which is there in the market, especially from retail investors and the domestic investors. Uh, the leadership is clearly in the, in the financial names today. And most of the small financial bank stocks are well bid, is what I understand from the FIs, uh, from the FI desk. Uh, the, uh, the, the surprisingly, the other big sector where there is a bit of buying interest back is the metal names. Most of the metal stocks are again well bid today, both from domestic and the, and the FI investors. Having said that, the volumes are on the lower side, but but still, you know, if you look at bro from an overall point of view, they are still stuck in that range between 17 and 200 on the downside and maybe 17 and 800. So, a meaningful upside uh, from here on is likely to be only above 17 and 800 levels. So, that's one a big level to watch out. Even the bank nifty, uh, the technical levels are uh, above uh, 40,000 you'll see a big uh, upside on the bank nifty as well. So that's where the momentum seems to be. But clearly, from a flow point of view, still looks like the FIs are better sellers in today's trade. Okay, and what about the stocks, Nimesh? What are you looking at? Uh, so in terms of individual names, Sonia, the first stock is VMart. There was a large block, uh, almost 7% equity exchange hands. It's a deal worth 400 crores, and I believe uh, one of the leading FI investors has uh, sold out its entire stake. So 99%, it's a, it's a clean-out trade from a large FI. So the disclosure will be important uh, uh, in, a, in the block deal data today. So that's the first one. The second stock is JK Paper. Uh, after a long time, some, 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 some sort of buying interest is back uh, at a leading FI desk. So the delivery volumes are going to be quite high uh, in JK Paper today. So that's the th second one. The third stock is Jubilant Foodworks. In a strong market, that stock is under pressure today, largely on selling pressure. So, uh, you know, uh, every time around the 600, 610 levels, there is some supply coming in from a larger FI in Jubilant Foodworks. So that's the third one. And the last stock is Sangye Industries. Uh, you know, that stock is up 10% in trade today. Uh, and Every now and then, there is a, there is a buzz of a, of a big corporate development. I was reading a Kotak report last week, and you know, they had identified some 10 odd stocks in the cement names, which are potential you know, takeover, takeover candidates going forward. So that's the reason why you know, Sanghi keeps buzzing every now and then. And again, in today's trade, it's up 10%, largely in back of rumors of a large corporate development happening very soon. Okay, Nimesh, thanks a lot for that. It's Sanghi Industries, that's a stock which has done well. Mitesh Thakkar is back with us for the BTST calls. Mitesh, uh, uh, go ahead. 
Yeah. Uh, Anuj, I have a buy on uh, Amar Raja batteries. I think that's broken out uh, and is now towards the trading near the day's high. So that's a BTST with a stop at about 532 for targets of 550. And an STBT on uh, PI Industries. Uh, that's the STBT. Keep the stop uh, just above levels of 350 and look for a target of 3020 for tomorrow. Okay, thanks a lot for that. So there are some BTST calls. We have Siddharth Bhamre, a research head at Relicare Broking, who joins us now. Uh, Siddharth, hi, good afternoon. It's autos all the way for the last many days. In fact, even today, a lot of the auto ancillaries are doing well. Uh, post the run-up, which are the stocks that still stand out for you? Good afternoon, Sonia. So, uh, the auto stocks, we have been positive since quite some time now, and they have been doing pretty well. Uh, and I still feel valuation-wise, there's still a lot of room on the outside. But Sonia, if auto stocks are doing so well, if auto numbers on monthly basis are quite encouraging, auto ancillaries can't remain behind for long. In fact, I distinctly remember today you talking about how, you know, what's happening in California and what uh, was the thing going on in EV space. Uh, Excite industry is something which we are liking a lot and uh, from the auto ancillary space. And I would say why. Uh, firstly, now also 98 to 99% of four-wheelers are not uh, EV vehicles which are getting manufactured. 95% of uh, uh, your two-wheelers are still uh, you know, non-EV uh, manufacturing. So this battery business is not going to go, plus there's huge uh, replacement demand. Uh, the thing which I want to talk over here is that because of this EV story, there was a lot of derating and a lot of pressure on uh, these battery manufacturers, be it Excide or Amraraja. And uh, valuation-wise, these stocks got uh, beaten down. In fact, stock like Excite, which used to enjoy a PE multiple of 18 to 20, uh, started trading around you know 12. So right now, despite seeing you know profitability growth, we are seeing stock trading around 12 PE, which is quite attractive. Uh, secondly, you know what about the future? Uh, company is you know coming uh, with a lithium-ion battery plant. So even if you know EV shares increases going forward, we will see this company capturing the market share going forward. So that part is also taken care of. Lead is a very uh, a basic raw material for this and uh, uh, it is in a downward uh, trajectory, stable to downward trajectory, I may say. So I think margins are going to increase. We are going to see change in sentiment and this de-rating would change into re-rating going forward and we are anticipating a decent upside in Excite. Uh, we have recommended around 130, 140 to our clients uh, we have valuation multiple, target valuation multiple to begin with of 14. Uh, so that gives us a target of around uh, 199 to 200 on standalone basis. And for the stake in HDFC Live, we can assign around 30 bucks. So around 230 something which we are eyeing in Excite. So that's that's clearly a buy for us. Even Amar Raja is not a bad buy. So that, hi, good afternoon. So that's one stock idea that you have from the auto ancillary space, uh, Excite. Uh, any other uh, idea in the mid cap space? Uh, if you could uh, talk about that as well. Sure, Anuj. Uh, so, uh, two stocks. Uh, firstly, consumer durables. Now, we all know that uh, housing space is uh, gaining momentum, be it affordable housing or entry level. Even premium housing uh, market segment is seeing decent amount of vibration, be it uh, uh, metros or, uh, uh, you know, semi-urban areas. And uh, the one of the most uh, beneficial sector out of this uh, space is uh, consumer durables. Though all stocks are looking attractive, be it Hevels or Crompton or Orient Electric, uh, we are finding statistics of uh, 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 Crompton quite attractive, Anuj. We are seeing that the company has consistently performed. Even in lockdown period, we have seen numbers not uh, deteriorating uh, in 2020 or 2021. And a decent growth rate of 15% is seen. It is also pouring into uh, different business, uh, be it you know, uh, other kitchen appliances. And it has acquired uh, Butterfly Gandhiwati and the integration is going on pretty well. Now, because uh, there is earning visibility, this space trades at a higher P multiple. Uh, so at 32 times P, you know, why we are saying why? Because uh, there is a revenue visibility for Crompton. It has traded an average of 40 P, you know, now trading at 32 P. And uh, from a, from a you know, uh, one to two years perspective, the stock is looking pretty attractive at 32 times multiple. Uh, we don't see much of downside in this name. Uh, we have seen historically, historically the stock coming down to around you know 27, 28 p, and uh, moving higher from there. So downside seems to be limited, and consistency would be rewarded. And hence we have suggested Crompton uh, among consumer durable to our clients. And the other one is uh, most talked about today, 
uh, which is uh, Tamil Nadu Mercantile Bank, and our rating is subscribed. I think numbers are pretty encouraging, be it NIMS for, at 4.1 or NPA levels, which are uh, uh, in a comparable space, uh, pretty uh, low. Uh, I think company didn't need this money. It is only for their expansion plans. Their listing was mandatory. And this uh, uh, funds which company would gather would help them in expanding, uh, not just in Tamil Nadu, but also as management spoke on your channel today morning uh, in different areas. And at price to adjust book value of 1.4, I think it is pretty attractive. So we are suggesting to subscribe uh, in this name. Okay, got that. Uh, before we let you go, just wanted a couple of more stocks. Um, you know, a lot of these NBFCs have started to pick up. In fact, M&M Financial is now uh, up, what, 45% this year. And the management, the commentary or the press release that they came out with was also quite good. Any thoughts here? So I uh, would not comment directly on m and Finance uh, because we are not covering that as of now. But then I would state, Sonia, that banking and financial space is among the least expensive space at this point of time. You must have seen that how, uh, you know, some of the large heavyweights, IT space have become expensive. And because of uh, issues lingering from COVID, rising interest rates, banking and financial names have taken a backseat. Uh, we are very optimistic uh, because of, uh, you know, private consumption increasing. Uh, even the private capex going forward, RBI has also mentioned that 70-75% of uh, capex utilization is already there. And there might be, you know, a fresh capacity which is coming in. So, uh, financial space and banking space are attracting a lot of uh, interest. And if somebody is finding this market expensive, but still want to be invested in, then I think banking and financial is a uh, larger pie one has to be. And it has to be part of the portfolio. Uh, m and financial we are not covering. Uh, Hence, I won't be able to comment specifically on that. Okay, on so stay on. Uh, we'll take a break and come back. And of course, uh, count on to the market close as well. Welcome back. We're counting down to close. It has been a very good day for the bulls. But let's get you some market opinion before we wrap up for the day. Earlier today, we caught up with Mahesh Nandurkar, the India strategist at Jeffries. He says the market momentum is in favour of India, but valuations are still uncomfortable. Listen in. From a medium term perspective, uh, you know, say, uh, you know, from a six month, 12 month perspective, uh, I would still reiterate my, uh, you know, cautious view here because, uh, you know, while uh, the corporate earnings are doing reasonably well, the economy is doing fundamentally well, but I think uh, we need to differentiate uh, between market movement and the economic fundamentals. Uh, these two are broadly correlated most of the times, but not all the times. And especially with uh, what is happening globally, especially in the US in terms of uh, the rates going up, uh, the Fed balance sheet shrinking, etc., the dollar strengthening, uh, all those things uh, are definitely, uh, you know, not very supportive from the valuation standpoint. Uh, so, yeah, so I would still maintain my cautious view here. Over the last 12 months, there have been, uh, you know, two such occasions uh, where uh, people actually moved the other way around. That is, you know, took money away from India and put more money into China. Uh, that happened once about 12 months ago back in October last year, then again in May, June this year. Uh, and both these times, uh, the investors uh, did not really end up making money. So uh, they really have a bad taste about uh, going overweight on China. And India, uh, you know, by by all means has done, uh, you know, very well economically, fundamentally, and, you know, from the stock market movement perspective as well. Okay, that was the word coming in from Jeffries today. But... Uh, well, let's do one thing. Uh, uh, Siddharth, we'll, we'll thank you on that note today. We're just running into market close. Uh, appreciate uh, your time and look forward to talking to you again uh, with some uh, you know, stock ideas. Uh, for now, before we start wrapping up, uh, Mitesh, uh, just a word on the bank nifty because, you know, uh, uh, Nimesh was talking about it in D-State Chatter about the feedback that he's getting that above 40,000, there's going to be a clean breakout on bank nifty. So... I mean, what's your view and how do you approach it? Do you buy hair itself? Do you wait for 40,000 to sort of cross and maybe close above that? Uh, your views? Yeah. So I think uh, if you look at the historical charts over here, uh, the highest ever weekly closing we've got on the bank net piece of is about uh, 40,400, uh, uh, 40,323. Uh, that was on the 22nd of October, uh, 2021. So I think uh, 40,300, 40,500, I think once that is taken out, yes, we get into new territories and the structure is very positive. So if that breakout happens, 
I think then we should at least look at 44,000, 44,500 levels for the bank. Now, having said that, the bigger question is whether you want to buy now or whether you want to buy it later. So the idea is that uh, I think start buying now. Uh, maybe you would want to pyramid more on the higher side once we have a breakout above this levels of 40,500 and then create your stop loss to just near your uh, buying average and then take it from there. Else, if you buy now and the market goes down and if you have a positional view, then you might want to add closer to about 38,000, 37,500 levels. Okay, that's... Uh... Very well explained, Mitesh. Thanks a lot for joining us. We'll talk to you tomorrow. For now, let's start wrapping up the market action for the day. It's a market in which bulls have complete control. And this is despite a global risk of. I mean, if you look at what's happening around you, Asia was down this morning. Most of the European markets, I think, are still down. US is not trading, obviously, today. So, uh, you know, tomorrow morning, we won't have the, that queue to deal with. The futures might still trade, but... Uh, the spot is not trading. Maybe that's something that uh, is also helping. But in general, the R market has had uh, a momentum. It's the best performing market. Uh, in terms of individual names, ITC, Reliance, Larsen & Tubro, ICICI Bank and Kotak Mahindra Bank, among the heavyweights, uh, did well. Uh, metals did well. So Hindalco, JSW Steel and Tata Steel. Once again, dollar at 110 and metal stocks outperforming. It's a very interesting market. Uh, there's Grassim, Shri Cement and HCL Tech as well, which also did well in trade. What didn't do too well? Well, some, some profit taking in auto names. Bajaj Auto, uh, Aishur Motors and Tata Motors were down. Uh, some profit taking in even the FMCG names uh, like Asian Paints, Nestle and Britannia. But otherwise, very strong going for the market and uh, the breadth also has been quite strong, Sonia. It has, but it's the large caps that have outperformed today. So, uh, you know, that seems to be the summary of the uh, market today. In the broader markets, so Suzlon was definitely the stock of the moment, 20% higher with big volumes there. Then you have a lot of auto ancillary names, so there's Tube Investments, Exide, Amara Raja, Jamna Auto, all of them anywhere between 5 to 7 odd percent. We were also talking about how names like Gabriel in India were at fresh 52 week highs as well. Apart from that, some of these consumption names, Patanjali Foods, Metro Brands, PVR, um, all up anywhere between 2 to 4 odd percent. And you have names like PB Fintech, Uco Bank, MM Financial, Nalco, Yes Bank, all up about 2 to 2.5%. Uh, on the downside, on the losing end, uh, just few and far between, really. Tata Tele, IOC, and GMR Infra, just a tad bit in the red. But with that, it, uh, we wrap up closing bell. Uh, the market has had a very good run today. 115 points in the green for the Nifty and the Sensex, and the Bank Nifty up 345 points. Up next, a very interesting chat on net worth and cash flows coming up on our Monday special, Money, Money, Money. Stay with us.